If your child is learning their ABCs, making the alphabet out of Play-Doh or modeling clay is a great activity to help them learn. It's fun and easy. I'll show you how. <laughs> to make our Play-Doh alphabet, you need Play-Doh and some tools. You can buy Play-Doh tools at a toy store or you can use things lying around the house. You need a smooth surface to work on, a hard rolling tool like a can or a jar, a plastic knife to cut with, and then you can use whatever objects you find around your house that might make an interesting texture or shape in your Play-Doh. Let's start with blue and make a letter A. Using both of my hands to apply even pressure, I'm gonna roll the Play-Doh out into a rope. Once it gets as long as I'd like it, I'm gonna trim off the end, here and here. Fold this like that, trim off this, and there's our A. For B, let's try something a little different. We're gonna roll our dough out flat using the side of our jar. Flipping it over as you go, so that you get a nice and even pancake. Now I'm gonna use my can to cut out two circles. Put them in the middle like this. And then for the rest of my pancake, I'm gonna cut out a long line like this and set it along the sides of my circles. Now to make it look more like a B, I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center of each. Hey, bottle cap starts with B. And there we have our blue B. C is next. To make the C, I'm going to do another rope with purple. Rolling it out, nice and even. Trim off one end. And there's a C. But it's not that interesting, so I'm gonna use my knife to add little lines. C. Now to make the D, I'm gonna flip over my C and take some more of my rope I just made and put it on the end. To make it more interesting, I'm gonna add some dots with the back of my pencil. D for dots. D. For E, I'm gonna use purple again. And roll it out flat. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut two equal strips. And I'll trim up the ends to make them neat. I put one here and cut the other into three parts. There's your E. Take away the bottom and you have your F. For G, let's use green. I'll make a nice long rope again. Curve it up. Put the end in, like that, and there's your G. For H, let's use our green to roll out a nice big pancake. And this time I wanna add some texture, so I'm gonna use one of my cans to roll ridges along it. Then using my knife, I'm gonna cut a rectangle. Then I'll cut out the top and the bottom, and there's our H. For I, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Now I'm gonna roll up each little piece and make them into a ball. start to form my letter I. 
and there's an eye. The cool thing about the little balls is you can easily rearrange them. To your next letter, J. Now K. So for K, I'm going to make a thicker rope than I've made before. Using my knife, I'll cut almost halfway down there and cut through the other side too. Flip it this way. Open up the legs and there's our K. For L, let's do another flat piece. So first I'll make my long rope. Then I'm gonna roll down with my jar, smoothing it out as I go. Trim off the end, cut a short piece, then a longer piece, L for longer. Put them both together, and there's our L. I'm gonna use a chopstick to add lines. Line starts with L. Okay, M, M, M. Let's start with a mound, like the letter M for mound, and roll it into almost like a triangle until it starts to look like a little bit of a mountain. Now we're gonna trim off the sides. Cut down the middle. And there's our M and all its beautiful mountains. Next up is N. Let's stretch out a piece of rope, nice and long. Just make an N very simply. Like that. To make our O, I'll use orange. And I'll roll it into the biggest pancake yet. I'll use my largest can to cut out a circle. Then I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center. There's my O. For P, I'll cut a long strip from my leftover pancake and put it there. For Q, put a little strip in right there. There's our Q. For R, I'll cut the back of our circle off. We'll add a strip back in here and a little leg there. And there's our R. For S, I'm gonna use green again and do something a little bit special. I'm gonna roll out a rope but make it thin at one end and a little bit thicker at the other. And this will help you remember your S because it looks like a snake. For my T, I'm gonna use the green again, roll out another rope Turn the ends. And use my forks, tines, to put a little print in it. Or add texture, which also starts with T. All right, we're winding down. For you, let's take two long ropes and twist them together. Now I'm twisting them up. Turn them up like that, up like the U. And there's our U. Now our last letters are kind of similar. So we're going to do them in a special way. 
once again, we'll roll out a big pancake. This one happens to be pink. I'm gonna cut four equal length strips. First, let's make our V. There's our V. Then we add two more. There's our W. Now we take those two and flip them over. There's our X. And take one away. We have our Y. For our final letter, we use our strips again shape a Z. But let's make this Z something that kids can remember by giving it a little something extra. Let's give it stripes like a zebra. Z for zebra. And there we have it. That's our alphabet. Try making alphabet letters out of Play-Doh with your kids. Not only will they have fun, the hands-on activity will help them learn and remember their ABCs. Show me all the cool letters you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> so then the big bad wolf went to the second little pig's house, and he knocked on the front door, and he said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair on our chinny chin chins, said the little pigs. Reading to your kids is one of the most important things you can do to help develop their language skills. But we all know how hard it can be to get them to focus. In this video, I'll show you how to boost their attention and get them really excited about reading. <laughs> when I read to my kid, I try to have as much fun as I can with the story. When they see that I enjoy it, they enjoy it too. Yes! So the big bad wolf, who by now was absolutely famished and terribly cranky, came to the third little pig's house and knocked on the door. Do you know what it means to be famished? No. It means you're so hungry. So hungry. You could just eat somebody up. To get my kids to really enjoy and focus on the story, I like to use different voices for each of the characters. So if I'm reading The Three Little Pigs, for the big bad wolf it's low and growly, but not too scary. And for the pigs, it's high and silly. He said, little pig, little pig, let me in. And what did the pig say? Not by your my chin chin chin. <laughs> not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. I also throw in a little drama when I read. If I read like this, and I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, my kids would lose interest. But when I'm a little more dramatic, my kids really get pulled into the story. I need to find another way in, said the big bad wolf. What do you think he thought he's gonna do? Go down the chimney. I know, I'll climb down the chimney. Is his name Santa Claus? Yeah. No, what's he doing? Climbing down the chimney and they all die cause there's fire. Oh my gosh, the third little pig jumped up quick, he said. We must build a fire in the fireplace. The wolf slid down the chimney and burned his bottom so badly that he howled in pain. Oh, oh. Can you make that noise? <laughs> Never to bother the three little pigs again. So the next time you read to your kids, try using different voices for each of the characters and be dramatic. When you have fun reading, your kids will too. I love you. Thanks for reading it to me. You did a great job. <laughs> Send us pictures or videos of you and your family during story time. Just hashtag them with Mother Goose Club or tag us here on YouTube. And tune into our YouTube channels to find more great videos for you and your kids. We would love to hear from you. So type in comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Reading to your kids is one of the most important things you can do to boost your kids. <laughs> I think he did. Oh! Oh! <laughs>
<laughs> I forgot the beginning of it. <laughs> when I read to my kids, <laughs> nope, this is fun. This is having fun. Okay. I'm still doing it again. I don't know how you deal with this all day, every day, do you? Have fun I love it. Your kids how do you deal with that? Oh. I also throw in. <clears throat> it's more. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so it is. <laughs> and it starts. A little drama. A little drama. <laughs> And the pigs are high and silly. <laughs> Let's see what we can find in our rhyming bag. Ring. Ting. Ping. Bling. Hi, I'm Rachel. You may know me as Teddy from the Mother Goose Club. And this is my rhyming champion, Olivia. Hi. <laughs> Rhyming is a great way for kids to learn how to play with words and sounds. It also helps them to become better readers and talkers. We'll show you how! <laughs> this is a great rhyming game. I've just put a bunch of things in a bag. Now you can use a container, a gift bag, a paper bag, or a pillowcase. Then we pull one thing out at a time and see how many words we can find that rhyme with that one thing. So for this, we take turns. I'd take out a sock, and then she would say rock. Then I'd say clock. Then she might say block. And you go on as long as you can. Take a look. Okay, Olivia, I have a sock. What rhymes with sock? Block. Good. Mm, lock. Talk. Mock. Rock. Good. <laughs> Rhyming teaches a skill called phonemic awareness. That's when kids can tell that words are made of sounds. It may seem simple, but it is so important for growing brains to practice phonemic awareness. You and your kids can rhyme all day long. When you're tying your child's shoe, you could say, hey, what rhymes with shoe or lace? Or when you're making breakfast, you could say, what rhymes with egg or juice? Sometimes I'll be silly and say, let's leave the house, mouse, or get in the car, star. Hat. Mat. Cat. Cat in the hat. <laughs> Ring. Bling. Sing. King. 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 <laughs> Rhyming is a simple and easy way to learn the sounds of language. And best of all, you don't even have to use real words. The important thing is to play with sounds and have fun. Star. Nar. Car. Wars. Yes, love it. What rhymes with bug? Hug. Woo! <laughs> so get out there and start rhyming. You can't go wrong. The sillier, the better. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by sharing your rhyme ideas and activities. Just hashtag pictures and videos, Mother Goose Club, or comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Rhyming teaches phonemic awareness. Practice phonemic awareness. <laughs> phonemic awareness. Doc? Tick. It's a phenomenon that I can't say phonemic so awareness. <laughs> Don't touch the microphone with a star, okay? I put a lot. Better readers. You can't pick your nose, sweet girl. <laughs> help us and other Mother Goose Club. And help us and other Mother Goose Club. And other Mother Goose Club families. Oh my gosh, y'all. Rope. Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> when you're tying your child's shoe. Child's shoe. What rhymes with tickle? <laughs> Tickle, pickle. <laughs> Mother Goose Club Playhouse.